hand hygiene is very interesting because it really involves trying to change behavior. Because when I first studied uh, hand hygiene, I was looking at the microbiology, what germs grow on your hands, what soaps work the best. And what I learned after a period of years is that it doesn't really matter if you even had the perfect soap. If nobody uses it, then it's not going to make a difference. So my interest sort of changed over years from sort of my, more of a microbiologic emphasis to how do we change behavior. That's been a very stubborn problem. And whether it has to do with washing or cleaning your hands, putting on a gown to prevent transmission of infection or whatever, there have been major efforts now to change not just individual behavior, but the systems in which people work to make it easy to do the right thing. People are often advised to sing happy birthday when they wash their hands. But you could sing happy birthday 20 times and be washing your hands and it still wouldn't work. You'd be doing it wrong. Because if you look at the way people often wash their hands, they rub their palms together. But it's the fingertips that are actually touching people and touching other things. So when you wash the hands, the main thing is not the time, but just to make sure that you get all the surfaces between and particularly around the nail beds. Because we have found that the nail beds is where a lot of the germs grow. In terms of hand sanitizers, the waterless products, the nice thing is you don't have to worry about a sink. You can have the hand sanitizer in your pocket or whatever. The trick with that is that you need enough quantity. And we've done some studies to show that if you use like, oh, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon, it's not enough. You need to use enough so that you can actually rub it in with your fingernails like this and then rub like that. And the alcohol works as long as it's wet. So you have to put enough on so that it doesn't immediately dry when you put it on. It only works when it's wet and it kills very quickly. We used to think that about 30% of healthcare associated infections were preventable. Now we think it's probably more like 70%. So let's say that I am uh, working with you and you're my patient and I don't wash my hands. The chances that you're going to get an infection are pretty low. But if you have an open wound, if your immune system is weak, that kind of thing, you will, will likely get an infection. So the, the problem is sorting out in this multifactorial causal picture how much of it is actually caused from hand hygiene. But we do know from all the work that's been done that probably about 20 to 30 percent reduction could be possible in certain kinds of infections if people did hand hygiene the way they're supposed to.